It's time to begin our service tonight. Why don't we stand on our feet? Let's open up this service of prayer. We're going before the Lord and asking Him to have His way in this service tonight. Loving God, we come to You, and as we do, Father, we lift up to You our hearts, our hands, and our voices in Your presence where we stand, ready to worship, ready to allow You to have Your way in our hearts and lives. Move and challenge us afresh tonight, God, by Thy Spirit. And God will give You all the glory and all the honor and the wonderful and glorious name of Jesus for your glory. Amen and amen. Let's grab a hymn or turn to page 430 or follow along on the on the uh, on the screen. Let's sing that song. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. Let's sing it as unto the Lord tonight. I came to Jesus weary, worn, and sad. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. And now his love has made my heart so glad he took my sins away he took my sins away he took my sins away and it keeps me singing every day I'm so glad he took 
my sins away. He took my sins away. The load of sin was more than I could bear. He took them all away. He took them all away. And now on him I roll my every care. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. God is good, worthy is He to be praised in His song, and even with a round of applause. Amen. Amen. Thank God we can worship Him in spirit and in truth, in the beauty of holiness, in reality, and a heart filled with love for Him. 
adoration for him for all the good things he's done for us loving god we do appreciate you tonight thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness to us have your way in this service in the wonderful and glorious name of jesus amen and amen all right you may be seated it's good to be back in god's house tonight I'd like to remind you of our saturday night bible saturday, study saturday, saturday night bible study at 7 30 7 30 saturday night and uh not only that but uh don't forget next tuesday starting next tuesday night we're going to be entering into a series of meetings we're calling them a time of action and uh now series we're not we're not uh talking to you so you might as well just go on and and go away all right all right and uh time of action and uh, looking forward to all that god is going to do going to do next week and uh, not we don't have to wait till next week for God to do something we can let him do something in our life tonight amen amen and then also uh, normally we would be receiving the offering at this time up but we're going to receive it at the end of the service and so just as a reminder for those of you that are giving electronically you can give online by going to my uh, www.myntcc.org uh, forward slash Belleville ill and of course there You'll get to our web page and then you could uh, I'll just follow the prompts to give online. Amen. Amen. We do thank you for your giving uh, in advance and whatever. We thank you for your giving and your faithfulness to uh, giving. Amen. And uh, I'll again just like to uh, express our appreciation uh, for your patience with us as we are uh, trying to do our part in this uh, COVID-19 thing. We don't want to focus on it too much, but... Uh, uh, it is something that we do need to be mindful of, and we appreciate those of you who are uh, taking it serious, and we ought to take it serious um, and and do what we can, do what we can uh, to uh, not be a spreader of it, all right? And uh, that means that if we are feeling sick, we ought to perhaps stay home, weigh it out and stay home. And, and normally we would say, just come to church. You never know what God will do. All right, but in uh, times like this, we are going to encourage you to stay home at this time, uh, especially uh, in light of this thing, and uh, and so, and then refrain from shaking of hands, and uh, don't forget to wash your hands, and then there's hand sanitizer in the back or whatever. And again, we do before service. Uh, my wife went down and sprayed all the hard surfaces down with a disinfectant and uh, uh, all the outside doors and whatever, but. Uh, since then, we've opened them up, so just be mindful, all right? Maybe maybe once you get to your car, use hand sanitizer and whatever, just for your own uh, sake and, and whatever. But we do appreciate your patience with us and your prayers. Uh, Sister uh, Cecilia Taylor came by the church today. Uh, she, uh, she told me, Pastor, I probably won't be in church for a while. Uh, she said, but I do come by, and I, she wanted to pay her tithe, and, and we are uh, thankful for that. She asked us to pray for her, and, and I... I said I would mention it to the church tonight and uh, pray for her and Miss Annie and, uh, of course, Lee. And um, they're all doing good. They're doing good. It's just that, you know, there are that uh, category where they could, you know what I'm saying, as far as age. And then with Miss Annie and Lee himself, uh, who has some, uh, and not, not it just he just said that he's in that high-risk category. And so uh, we understand and uh, again, we do appreciate your patience in it. Normally, we would also uh, sing a special at this time, but we're going to go ahead and now maybe next week we will start singing specials again. All right. And uh, but it probably will be uh, uh, pre-recorded music and then somebody singing. All right. Just for the sake of. Uh, uh, well, you know, it's like preaching. It gets kind of juicy sometimes you know what I'm saying and and uh, and so to not spread so many uh, germs or whatever uh, we'll try to eliminate as much uh, human activity up here as possible and again again just for the sake all right just for the sake and again we do appreciate your patience with us in that regard I want to begin to read tonight out of Philippians chapter 3 a very very familiar portion of scripture to all of us and um, one used a lot and maybe not as far into that uh, that Bible reading tonight but we are going to read from chapter 3 and it will sound familiar uh, to many here tonight though I might also have confidence in the flesh if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh I more 
For I was circumcised the eighth day of my life. I got circumcised. Of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin. All right. In fact, Jews are called Benjamites even today. Uh, it is a slang term, but uh, it's a slang because the, the Jewish people are just simply known as Benjamites, all right, or whatever. That's a, uh, the enemies of God use it as a slang, all right, but here Paul, Paul was saying of the tribe of Benjamin. Evidently, the tribe of Benjamin was uh, a very important tribe in the nation. And Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. In other words, this man uh, had a zeal for God, but it was a zeal without knowledge, all right? But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things, but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And with the help of the Lord tonight, we want to speak to you on the title, Loss and Gain. Loss and Gain. Reverend Bergerson, would you please stand and pray over the message and the messenger tonight. Amen. Loss and gain. And what I want to do, I thought I did this earlier, but evidently I did not. And so we're going to do it now. And that way I can hopefully do this without interruption. All right. Loss and gain. Is it up there, the title up there? All right, very good. And it's not moving on its own. All right, Sister Vasquez, if you'd like to sing tonight after service or for the altar call, I believe I have alabaster box or whatever, okay, something you already know and whatever, but okay. All right, very good. I have loss and gain, but I actually typed in gain and loss. Well, it's loss and gain. You got to lose something to gain something, right? And if you never gain anything, how can you lose it, right? And so, in the light of eternity, in the light of eternity, uh, there are uh, some things that are worth losing and some things that are worth gaining. Those who have met Jesus, what they have lost, is really nothing in comparison to what they've gained. A lot of people think that, you know, what God asked them to do is too hard, it's too difficult. They, they got, got too, too much, much to lose. lose. Well, uh, really, really, we, we got, got too, too much, much to gain to, to not lose it. We, we got, got too, too much to gain in the light of eternity to not lose everything uh, that really stands in the way of us gaining that which we have to gain. And so tonight we just we don't want to spend much time here uh, and on the outline or whatever, just enough time to let God deal with our hearts. We want to uh, look at some of the things that we have lost or that the Christian has lost. And the first thing that they've lost is the vanity of the world. The vanity of this world. The things of this world are vain at best. And the reason why they're vain is because they're fleeting. They come and they go. The love of this world is a fleeting love. Right on time. 
The love of this world is a fleeting love because it comes and goes. It's like the wind. It's always changing. It's like the waves of the sea up and down, in and out. That's the love of this world. Now the love of God is different. The love of God is steadfast, it's unmovable, it's unchanging, and it's never-ending. So, we have the love of the world to, to lose in gaining the love of God, which is far better. We have the, lo- the, the vanity of this world to lose. Paul said... Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. You know, there's a lot of people who perhaps have bragging rights in the flesh. You know, they 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 know how to manipulate, they know how to, you know, uh, they, they they just they they know how they know they, they just they just know how to get what they want, you know what I'm saying? They know how to uh, put the guilt on people to to where uh, a person will sign on the dotted line. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I was listening to uh, a talk show yesterday about money, and I, I'm not going to mention uh, uh, the, the the program that uh, they were talking about, but evidently there was a program that taught you how to invest in real estate. And uh, but uh, really, when it all came down to it, it was nothing more than a big money grab on the part of the program originator. And what they were teaching you was, uh, you know, to invest in their program. And they did it through high pressure. They made you feel like a dog if you didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? And so their their goal was to get you to buy their their expensive program and and then leave you with the bill afterwards you know what I'm saying and so uh, and many people fell for it because uh, it you know and, and and some people just didn't they 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 didn't want to feel like the dog and not go for it you know what I'm saying and so they they signed their name on the and they even they even open up expensive uh, credit card accounts to do it or they they sought the credit card companies that held their accounts to expand their uh, their bottom line so that they can invest in real estate. And um, there's nothing wrong with investing in real estate. That's not what I'm, uh, I'm not necessarily after that or, or against that or whatever, but what I'm saying is there are some people who just know how to work people to get them to do what they want done. You know what I'm saying? And without any real concern for the individual that they're trying to get money from. You know what I'm saying? Or they're trying to get this from, or they're trying to get that from. There are people who, uh, like Paul, may have um, some bragging rights. They drive a nice car. They own uh, millions of dollars in, 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 in property. They have, they have a, a large account of this and that, but uh, that's today. Tomorrow may be a whole different story. Tomorrow maybe there's another man who teaches finances who who got his start in real estate only to sell it all because it was too much of a headache and he wasn't really gaining anything, he was losing. And uh, uh, I know because I used to pastor a fella who owned half of the city that I I was pastoring in, and uh, just a young man, a young man who who was just you know, and and he was making it happen, but there came a time when things began to change, economies were the economy was beginning to fail, and the 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 city that we were in uh, was dependent on the military, and and the military wasn't there. Because they were fighting a war somewhere else. And the, the, the spouses were leaving. And so the properties that he owned were set and vacant. And whether they're vacant or not, the, 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 uh, the mortgage payments still had to be paid. 
and the insurance payments still had to be paid. And so there was a time when things were going good, but then they were beginning to dry up. So he called this man, called this national uh, man, uh, on, on, and, and the man said, sell it all. <laughs> Get out of it. Get out. You know, because basically his, his story was his story. You know what I'm saying? His story was his story. And, uh, and so from what I understand, the man sold it all. And now he's doing pretty good uh, doing something else. You know what I'm saying? Now he owns, I think he, he kept one, one property for, for his family or whatever. But anyways, all right. The vanity of this world, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I more. There may be some folks that have bragging rights. More so than other people. Because other people might, might say, well, you know, uh, I don't want to tie my life down with this. I want to be able to go when God says go. Or do when God says do. He says, circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law, a Pharisee. Man, I was it. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of what he's saying here. I was it. I'm the man. Concerning zeal, I even persecuted the church. You couldn't get any better than me. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of people out there in the world <clears throat> that think that they're doing good because they are speaking out against this or they're speaking out against that. But what may be considered good in the world may not be considered good in the light of eternity. And I would say in the light of eternity is really the thing that matters the most. Where are you going to be 10,000 years from now? Where are you going to be in 100 years from now? Reminded of a time when I knew a man who, who knew a banker. And the banker, even on his dying bed, wanted to do one more deal. You couldn't talk to him about Jesus. He didn't want to hear about Jesus. He wanted to hear about a dollar bill. Well, you know... I doubt that he made it to heaven. I, I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe somewhere between his last breath and, and uh, the time he took his last breath and he made it right with God. I, 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 I don't think so, but there, there's always that possibility. I don't know. But man, why wait to your last dying breath uh, to try to make things right with God? You know what I'm saying? That's not the time to do it. The time to do it is when, uh, is when it really, you know, maybe, maybe we can give something to God. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we can offer him our, our life a living sacrifice. He, God, here I am. You know, use me for your glory. You know what I'm saying? Instead of saying, uh, God, uh, I'm going to use your fire escape that you made for me just right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I spent my life doing what I wanted to do. And now, now it's time to go out into eternity. And I don't know if I want to go the way that I, I'm really heading. So you know, maybe I could jump off this ship and, and jump into that. And, and jump into that, that, that lifeboat, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, but, but the chances of, of landing in the lifeboat, lifeboat uh, are pretty, pretty slim too, you know what I'm saying? So again, why take that chance? Why consider the things of this world more valuable than the things of God? Paul was heading down that road. He was on that road. Until one day, he had an encounter with Jesus. One day the lights came on, so to speak. One day the thing that mattered the most became uh, very clear to him. And it wasn't his standing in life. It was his relationship with the Son of Almighty God. Because if you don't have a relationship with him, then you really don't have a whole lot. You really don't have a whole lot. We're speaking about loss and gain. Concerning zeal, 
He persecuted the church. He bragged about it. Touching the righteousness which is of the law, he said, I was blameless. But you see, you can have all of these things and still lose your soul in hell. You can have everything that money can buy. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that there is. But if you don't have everything that Jesus provides, has provided, in other words, if you're not ready to die right now, uh, knowing that you're on your way to heaven, then, you know, you might want to sell some of the things that you own in the world. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? What I mean by that, what I mean by that is you may want to change your, what? Your affections or... Maybe your priorities a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because I can die and go to heaven missing a hand. I can die and go to heaven missing an arm. I can die and go to heaven missing a leg or missing a foot or missing an eye or missing an ear. I can even die and go to heaven missing a head. If before the head was cut off, I was right with God. You know what I'm saying? But I can't die and go to heaven if I don't have Jesus. If I don't have the thing that money can't buy. And you can't buy Jesus with money. You can't buy him with the lifestyle that you live. There's only one way that you can get him. And that is you've got to be willing to lay it all down for him. Amen. And the reason why we have to be willing to lay it all down for him is because he laid it all down for you and I. He left what? What did Jesus leave uh, to come to where we were? Well, let's look at it tonight. He left streets that were paved with pure gold. He left that city where there never comes night. He left the host of angels. He left that, that, that the heavenly creatures where uh, the, he was adored every day. He left the very presence of God uh, where there is found in his presence fullness of joy. He left a place where there was no curse of sin. He left a place where there was no knowledge of evil. No knowledge of wrongdoing. No knowledge of rebelling against God. Why? Because everybody there loved God. They don't even know that there's a law up there. Why? Because they so love God that whatever God wants them to do, they just willingly do it. And he left all that to come down here. And when he came down here, he was gladly received, right? He was rejected. He was spit upon. He was mocked cruelly. He was ridiculed and scorned. He came here to save them that were mocking him. To save them that were scorning him. To save them that were spitting in his face. He came uh, not to uh, raise up some great mighty army down here to uh, uh, so that they could uh, or, or so that he could uh, 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 become a king uh, in the in the eyes of men. No, he didn't come here for that reason. Now he did come to build a kingdom, but the kingdom that he was building was uh, was not of men that 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 were a uh, uh, fight uh, with uh, with the, the the weapons of men. He came to build a kingdom. Uh, whose, whose law was the law of love and righteousness and justice for all. And God's justice is true justice. You know what I'm saying? Now you can pull the wool over God's eyes, but you can't. You, I mean man's eyes, but you're not pulling the wool over God's eyes. You know what I'm saying? All right. And so uh, there's people who, uh, they, have a lot, they have a lot that they need to get right with God. I wouldn't want to be in their shoes. I'm saying I wouldn't want to be in their shoes so but anyways what they've lost the man that's on the one man or woman that's on their way of he uh, to heaven they've lost all these things they've lost the weight of sin they've lost the, the shame the guilt and the shame of their sin 
Their, their steps are a lot lighter now. Why? Because they've been washed in the blood. There's not this heavy weight. Uh, the feeble hands that once hung down, they're not weighted down by guilt and shame anymore. Uh, but now they're able to be raised up uh, uh, freely uh, in the presence of God. And they're able to offer up the sacrifice of praise uh, and say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Unashamed uh, in the face of all the world. Uh, unashamed to tell of uh, the love of God. To tell of uh, the goodness of God. To tell uh, the world how good God is. Amen. And the world might look at you like you're crazy. You know, I am crazy. I'm crazy about Jesus. Amen. Number two, what have they gained? <laughs> Philippians chapter four, uh, 3, verse 7 and 8. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. We've gained Christ. What have we gained when we gain him? Well, what have we gained? The Bible says what? We're heirs of God. And joint heirs with Jesus Christ. How do we become an heir of God? We became an heir of God when we became joint heirs with Jesus Christ. All things that the Father... Uh, has belongs to him. If all things that the Father has belongs to him, then all things that that Father has belongs to those that are in Christ. Amen. And so we've gained all things that are eternal. I've got a house that doesn't set on three acres. I got a house that sets on a hillside on the streets of glory. And I guarantee you that house isn't going to fade away. That house, I'm not going to have to get a roof uh, repair on it. That house, I'm not going to have to treat for bugs uh, every now and then. I'm not going to have to worry about snakes and, and, and lizards and things like that up there. Now, if, I, if there, there are snakes, I, I don't know, maybe there are snakes up there. God, God made the snake. The, the devil's the one that, 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 that cursed the snake. snake. All right. Maybe there's some heavenly snakes up there. I don't know. But I guarantee you, if they're there, you're not going to be afraid, afraid of them. You know what I'm saying? I think I remember reading where the Bible says that, that the lion and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the and the lamb are going to lay together. You know what I'm saying? Up there, there there's not going to be any, any need for uh, uh, food uh, to subside. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not going to have to eat to live up there. I just had to, I just we just eat up there to enjoy eating. You know what I'm saying? To break bread one with another. And uh, man, I, I guarantee you, heaven's food is going to be a lot better than, than earth's food. Amen. Won't be as fat, fattening. Won't make us fat. Yeah, praise God, man. You just have to look at. Once you hit a certain age, man, you just got to look at food and you gain weight. So, and we have a lot to gain up there, but weight's not one of them. All right. We have a lot to gain up there, but, but weight's not one. Thank God for that. Amen. I saw a brother over in St. Louis. I, I didn't recognize him. I said, that looks like brother so-and-so. That looks like his family, but who's that man walking? He lost 40 pounds. I said, man, you're looking good. I said, I've lost 10. I said, I, would like, I wish I could lose 40, but man, as soon as I lose 11, it, I gain two back. And so... I'm hovering right around 9 or 10. But anyways, let's go on. What we've gained. But what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things were lost. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord. Knowing Him is an excellent thing. Knowing him is far better than any other knowledge that man can have. Knowing him. Not knowing of him, but knowing him. Like that song says, he knows my name. Knowing that he knows your name. Knowing him. To the place where you're not ashamed to call on his name. You're not ashamed to pray and ask him. 
Now I understand that some people, you know, in their walk with God, and thank God that they are, and they are walking with God. They may be brand new Christians, and they may not have confidence enough in themselves to pray and ask God to do things for them, because number one, they have a, a accuser. The devil knows all their past. And the first thing the devil wants to do uh, is bring up your past and, 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 and use your past against you to convince you that you are unworthy still to ask Jesus for anything. But you know, the blood of Jesus is able to cleanse us from all sin. And if we've been cleansed from our sin, and if we've been cleansed from our iniquity, then it doesn't matter what happened yesterday, it doesn't matter to him any longer. You can ask him. And, and sometimes in asking, man, we, 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 we see really the need for what? Our humility to be humble. Because God, I'm not, you know, if I look back over my life, I am not worthy for you to even hear my prayer. But thank God, thank God he does. And as we lift up our prayer to him and as he, he, he helps us to realize to realize, really, uh, we have nothing to brag about. Except for one thing. Jesus. I want to brag about Him. I want to brag about His love. I want to brag about His goodness. I want to brag about His willingness to forgive me. I want to brag about His willingness to heal me. I want to brag about His willingness to meet all my need according to His riches in glory. Amen. And I want to be able to tell the world, look what the Lord has done. Amen. Look at me. You know what I used to be. But thank God like that, like that man bound uh, by that legion of demons. When Jesus set him free, he went back home. He said, you know what I used to be. Look what Jesus did for me. We know, we know that his testimony had a great effect. Why? Because when Jesus was there at the time he, uh, he delivered that man, they said, depart from us, get out of here. But when he went back, they gladly received him. Why? Because that one man, uh, that one man uh, who had uh, an ex a relationship with Jesus went back and told uh, all of them of his city uh, uh, the, uh, from which they drove him out. Uh, he went back and said, look what Jesus has done for me. And when Jesus came back, uh, they gladly received him. Amen. He said, I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. The vanity of this world, nothing but dung that I may win Christ. Man, when you win him, when you gain him, you've gained it all. When you've gained him, you gain everything. Which, Which is my last point tonight. tonight. Nothing, nothing is more valuable to them now than Jesus. Jesus. Nothing is more valuable to us than Jesus. Jesus. I'm, I'm not going to trade Jesus, Jesus for anything. anything. You know, the, the devil, devil wants, wants me to give him up for this cause and that cause. No, there's no greater cause on the face of the earth than the cause of Christ. The cause of Christ is a cause of man's redemption. And what men need more than anything is redemption. If man would be redeemed, there wouldn't be the problems that there are today. The problems that man, the problems that are facing our country and this world is a sin problem. And legislation can't fix it. There's only one thing that can. It's called salvation. Salvation changes the heart. And you can legislate man into a box. And that's what, that's what our government is doing. Legislating us into a box. God only needed ten, ten laws. There's thousands and thousands of laws written every year in our country. 
You know what I'm saying? If, man, you know, if the police wanted to, they can arrest you just for crossing the street. Did you know that? You don't wait on that green light. You cross the street against the green light. They can put you, they can, they can give you a ticket. You used to call, be called jaywalking. How many remember that? I remember that. I grew up in a time when jaywalking used to, you get, used to get uh, <laughs> fined for it. You know what I'm saying? And there, 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 there's some other crazy laws you learn about, man. If you, if you dress this way, uh, I lived in Cordova, Alaska, and during a certain time of the year, if you didn't dress a certain way, you'd go to jail. You'd go to jail. And that was a, it was a, it was, a, it was all fun and games, but it was a, it was real. You know what I'm saying? You're in jail for the night. That wasn't, wasn't a felony, felony charge, charge or anything like that. that. But, but you know, just crazy laws. laws. Man, man trying, trying to make, make men do things, things for them. them. You know what I'm saying? saying? And really, the, the laws, laws aren't for the righteous, but they're for the unrighteous. You know what I'm saying? They're not for the ones that want to do right. They're for the ones that don't want to do right. And there's a bunch of them out there. How do I know? Because I used to be one. I used to be one. Because I used to be a sinner. And sinners do what sinners do. They break the law all the time. How do you know, preacher? You're, well, how many, how many used to go night clubbing? How many ever drove with a few drinks underneath your breath? You know. Well, you're not raising your hand on that one. Don't raise your hand. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, just the goodness and the mercy of God that we're even here today, many of us. I drove in conditions that, you know, I don't even know how I got home. And so, all right. Nothing is more valuable than, to them now than Jesus. He said, if by any means I might attain Unto the resurrection of the dead. That's not the verse I wanted. But that's the one I wrote down. I think I, I, I. Anyways. He said. What? That I may win Christ. And be found in him. Alright. Not having my own righteousness. The only thing I want now. Is Jesus. Willing to lose everything. For the name of Christ. I say, as, as sister, sister, if you'd like, like to, to sing tonight, tonight. okay. Remember, I was listening to a sermon on a cassette one time back in the day, before CDs and MP3 and all these things. Cassette was the was the the means of media back then, and here was this old retired preacher. He got out of the ministry. He decided that he was going to spend the rest of his life just fishing. But in that service, God began to deal with him. He began to deal with him and said, what are you doing? It's kind of like Elijah. What are you doing here, Elijah? So he, he got up and he began to testify how that God began to deal with his heart about retiring. He said, I'm not going to retire anymore. I'm coming out of retirement. I'm going to refire myself. I'm going to refire myself. I'm going to serve Jesus all the way to the very end of my life. I'm going to give it to him. Instead of giving it to the fish hook. You know what I'm saying? Instead of giving it to the worm. Or the lure. Or the fly. I'm going to give it to Jesus. I mean. When you don't have anything to live for. 
the, the process of death has already started, you know what I'm saying? So why not have something to live for? There's no greater thing to live for than to live for Jesus, amen? Tonight as she begins to, or as we begin to look toward the close, how is it in your life? Have you lost or are you willing to lose like Paul? You know, nothing that we lose for Jesus' sake. Does he not give it back? He gives it right back to us. Tonight, we can give him our everything. We can be like him. And we can give him exactly what he gave us. And what he gave us was his all tonight. Will you let him have his way in your heart and in your soul? As we begin to find a place to pray right now, the altars are open. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, we invite you to come tonight and let God have his way in your heart and in your soul. God bless you, Jesus.
Amen. It's been good to be in God's house tonight. Good to know that uh, what we lose for Jesus' sake, he gives it right back to us. Amen. And we find something better anyways. And there ain't meant nothing better than Jesus. Does that old song say, can't nobody do me like Jesus? Amen. And that's true tonight. It's our prayer tonight that uh, as you leave, you go in the love of God. Let the love of God go with you. Remember, uh, Bible study Saturday night. Bible study Saturday night. And uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead and ask Brother Berga, please stand, pray, dismiss us in prayer. And uh, not only dismiss us in prayer, Brother, but uh, pray over the offering. And again, if those of you are given online, you can do so by going to www.myntcc.org uh, or yeah, .org forward slash Belleville Ill. And uh, take you to the website and you can give electronically. Brother Berga, sir, would you please pray over the gift and the giver and ask the Lord's blessings tonight. All right, Father, we appreciate you, ministry. Thank you for your great many blessings. We pray that you bless this evening's gift, this meeting, and your work here at Belleville. And also, please keep your hands upon each other among us as we go our separate ways, Lord God. Help us to be constantly encouraged in you, Lord God, Lord, keeping our mind steadfast. Amen. All right, folks, you may consider yourself dismissed. Remember Bible study Saturday night, 7.30. Pray for Reverend Love. Uh, tomorrow night, tomorrow night, be the will Lord. My wife and I are going to be going to St. Louis for church. You guys want to come, you're more than welcome to go with us, all right? Or meet us there at 7.30 uh, tomorrow night. And uh, we might do the same thing on Friday, all right, but for sure tomorrow night. So if you'd like to go, uh, please feel free uh, to go. And we'll see you there, all right? Church begins there at 7.30, all right? Pray for the revival there. Pray for the revival here. And pray for our country. Amen. Good night. We've already been dismissed in prayer. Shake can't well. Uh, sh shoulder or, or whatever. All right. All right. Don't do the chin kick, though, okay? All right. Hey, God bless you, folks. We'll see you. Uh-oh. Uh we'll see you. Uh, Saturday night at 7.30 if we don't see you in St. Louis tomorrow. Good night. God bless you, folks.